Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight, where I talk about a director's filmography from their first to their most recent. Here I am on Peter Jackson's work, the man who adapted J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings into three prestigious films. The experience going into this is no different than watching the theatrical, only you just have a little bit more to look at. Different exposition points, new dialogue within the same scene, extended scenes, fleshed out character development that help with later scenes, and the the list just goes on. Talking to you won't be a rehash of me just talking about the plot vaguely, mentioning the technical craft of the film's outstanding cinematography or what have you, but this will be talking points of what I believe were great within the extended edition and what I had felt should have made it to theatrical, or what scenes I just loved originally, or ones that I just loved in the extended. More or less, I'm just going to be gushing about the film and just be a complete nerd. So without further ado, let's get into the first segment. One of my favorite moments in the beginning of the film, Gandalf and company finally meet up with Merry and Pippin after being separated from one another since the end of the first film. At the end of the film, when the ring is destroyed and Frodo is rescued from Mount Doom, he awakes some time after and sees a resurrected Gandalf before him. The laughter that begins is contagious, seeing the fellowship together once again shows the growth of everyone, despite Boromir no longer a part of the fellowship, is truly cathartic. From the moment we meet Faramir, we immediately know not only is he under tremendous pressure to keep a fallen city remained intact because his brother held it so well, we now found out what drives him. His father is a cruel, harsh, and very condescending individual. This sends Faramir and the rest of his company right back out to Osgiliath in a now orc-infested city, and it really pulls at the heartstrings big time. Not to mention Pippin's song during that moment really brings a somber feeling that things are just not going well. From the moment Gandalf says prepare for battle after smacking Denethor in the face, great moment by the way, is a anxiety ridden prestigious siege that I cannot get over. I just simply can't. It is god tier amazing. As things are looking hopeless with Gondor's armies are just fighting tooth and nail down to the last man, all just feels lost. That's until the Rohirrim arrive. A horn bursts through the night and into the dawn and it's just harrowing. <laughs> King Théoden takes 6,000 strong against the might of possibly 100,000 orcs and plow through those orcs like they were wheat in a field. Everything is looking be far better than it did as soon as Théoden came in crashing the party, making the orcs run for their lives. But soon, a bigger problem presents itself as the battle is not over. You really get this feeling that Theoden is unstoppable at this point, and even with 6,000 spears, he can achieve the unachievable. That's until Theoden sees across the fields at a distance, and the look of surprise on his face, shock, and oh god, this is not good. When we finally see what he sees, you realize that his luck is about to run out real fast. It is probably the most intense battle I have ever seen. The first three minutes is just overwhelming, entertaining, and brutal. Try using those words in the next critique you have for a film. So we're definitely going to be moving on from the Siege of Minas Tirith. I think I've definitely gushed enough. So we're going back to Frodo and Sam. Frodo is getting closer and closer to his destination, but not without Gollum showing the way with a sinister plan behind it. Frodo gets tricked into Shelob's lair, and from there it is a terrifying journey inwards. I may not like spiders, but this was thrilling to say the least. 
With a lull in between Shiloh's lair and Gollum's betrayal, there is a moment that Frodo has that completely defeats him. He collapses, and then he's transported, for just a mere moment, into a more luscious area where Galadriel visits him and reminds him that if he does not find a way, no one will. Legolas bringing down an elephant by himself. Ridiculous. Sliding down the trunk like a surfer. Might as well be perfect. What makes the whole moment perfect? Gimli. That still only counts as one! By the end, we all know Gandalf would leave, but that's not the kick in the nuts. When he turns to the hobbits and says, It is time, Frodo, you start to understand that Frodo endured a lot and has to move on. What hurts even worse is that Sam is completely blindsided by this, but you can see how much he really understands, even though he doesn't want him to go. We're gonna break this one down, because everything about this scene is just... Phenomenal. The way the Lord of the Rings puts everything to rest at this part is lovely, welcoming, and puts a closure with Aragorn. His crowning by a wizard is to be assumed a big deal, and shot of his back turned to the camera pulling in is nothing short of immaculate. The scenery and use of colors are bright, rich, and full of texture. Aragorn's singing was just a nice, brilliant touch as well. Arwen showing up is emotionally satisfying, but the icing on the cake really comes down to Aragorn not taking the spotlight just for himself, telling everyone that this moment doesn't belong to him, but to everyone. He shows it by telling the hobbits as they bow to him that they bow to no one, and he bows to them. This is by far my favorite scene in Return of the King. I'm sure this was a sort of let's cut this out for the sake of time, but honestly, I loved having an extended moment with Mary and Pippin talking about the Shire. A nice reminder of what they're fighting for and what their previous lives were like. Definitely an integral part of the film that had been just cut out. Theatrical version sort of dismisses Saruman as an afterthought. Extended version finds the time to explain what exactly happened to this character and how it progresses the plot forward. So you have come here for information? I have some for you. But this is definitely one I think they should have kept in. Pippin finds himself distracted in the middle of a song and looks at Gandalf. I would imagine that this is kind of like a sense of worry that Pippin has over his approval towards Gandalf, because Gandalf has been rather harsh on Pippin throughout all three films. And honestly, it kind of shows at this point, because when Pippin grabs the Palantir after Saruman leaves it behind, it kind of adds that bit of angst, and just for a brief moment, layers between both characters. This is definitely a nice sequence, but not one I think that should have been kept in. I enjoyed seeing it mostly because it shows the care and kindness Aragorn shows towards Eowyn. Eowyn recounts a dream, and she's really fearful of what the dream actually portrayed. Though Aragorn didn't really have a lot to say, it sort of looked as if he kind of gave her a pat on the head and sent her back to sleep. But what I really enjoyed was that he let her have her dream, told her thoughts changed during nighttime, and comforted her back to sleep. Definitely a scene that I felt like should have been left in. Regardless, this shows the growth Pippin has as a character now that he is no longer around Merry. Barely separated since leaving the Shire, both hobbits deal with their separation by focusing on what's around them. What they have done in the meantime is mature, Pippin especially. Faramir gets a chance to shine through his compassion and gives us a glimpse into what kind of person he is without the dread of knowing that he's not the most favored son. And Pippin comforts him, saying that his father does love him and that he'll show it in time. 
I won't talk this battle sequence to death. I promise. I said I would gush. I did. And now I am done. But there are various tidbits of warfare here and there throughout this extended edition. But one I felt should have been not cut out is Gandalf confronting the Nazgul. Granted, the extended edition has events of battles that sort of shift how you see them, but that's okay. I think this one would have been like, here's this scene, here's how we should kind of just switch things out, do this, do that, and I think that would have been just fine. This was one hell of a confrontation that I just feel like should have been kept in. Eowyn has definitely proven herself in battle, especially after almost dying. But sadly, with the fear of her world ending, no one to really console her, after Aragorn kind of said, I don't see you the same way as you see me, and she loses her uncle, and all that stuff, Faramir really steps in, in a romantic way, and in comforts her, telling her that the evil will not endure. I think it's about time that I mentioned Sam and Frodo as everything has been getting love. The adventure between Sam and Frodo has been a taxing one. They had to pretend to be orcs by the time they finally reunited and resumed their journey. But they unfortunately get mistaken for some slacking warriors and join ranks for a, a battalion that was passing by. They get halted and an inspection by a one-eyed orc I don't know what its deal was, starts coming through and almost blows Sam and Frodo's cover. What I really loved about this scene is where it shows the struggles of their journey no matter where they are. No aspect of them getting through Mordor was easy and this was just a little extra flavoring. This is a simple scene, but I found it to be quite humorous. Frodo has been still under Smeagol's deception and during their confrontation, their final Second to last, I think. Uh, Frodo exclaims that Smeagol swore on the precious. Smeagol just said, Smeagol lied. This sequence should never have been cut. Honest to God, this is one of my favorite moments in the extended cut. Other than Aragorn's coronation, this is another big one. Aragorn and company ride up to the Black Gate. Instead of being confronted by the army as the theatrical depicted, a lone rider comes out to speak to the company. The mouth of Sauron alone is intimidating. My master, Sauron the Great, bids thee welcome. It lays down the intent, shakes up many of the characters. I have a token I was bidden to show thee. Amazing. Honestly, I can't get over it. I loved this extended edition, but this was probably one of the more difficult to review out of the three. Not only was this a beautiful trilogy and an end to one, but all of these scenes are just my favorite. I simply just, I, I did not have a good time cherry picking. Not one bit. I just know the extended editions are films that need to be watched by those who are curious, and not for those who are first coming in. Beyond all that, when I started this review segment, I had intended to bring in fans of the films that really did care about this trilogy, and I really wanted to ask them their opinions and have them film it, and I would have featured it at the end of each extended edition. Sadly, I never got a chance to do that, so I never got a hit, nor an inquiry. As I reached to this portion of my review, a dear friend of mine reached out and wanted to collab. Without further ado, I present to you my friend Amy. I want to start off when I got into Lord of the Rings because I didn't grow up with it per se. I mean, I, I kind of did, but then I, I didn't. When it first initially came out, um, I was a kid, a young, stupid, snotty-nosed brat kid. And my parents are the ones that were really into fantasy and sci-fi movies. And one day they were watching one of the films downstairs and I was just walking by and there was this gruesome part i forgot what it was but it it scared me and i took off the st up the stairs and i was like i'm never watching that movie well i ended up watching the movie anyways and um one day i decided to just sit down and actually watch all three now back then i had a case i don't have it anymore i lost it sadly but i had the dvd version of it we didn't have the vhs and i did get 
an autograph from Sean Ashton from Awesome Con 2015. Uh, he's a really nice guy, really chill. So when I first uh, finally grew a pair of balls and sat down and actually watched um, the trilogy, I was, I was probably a teenager. I wasn't a kid anymore. I was like a teenager. At first, I didn't understand it, so it took me a while to like kind of get it to click. Um, but I just found I found it all fascinating. Like I appreciate the cinematography, the tone, the attitude, the voicing, uh, the music, especially the music. Oh my God! Like I love to sing, so when I would like hear the chorus in the background, I'm I I would sing with it because I'm a Luna tune, you know. I it was just overall enjoyable, and it and it kept my attention on screen for the whole duration. Uh, I did not watch the extended release versions, but I have seen the uh, deleted scenes, and um the extended scenes and I find it interesting that some of those scenes should have stayed in the films um so for example for uh, Return of the King there is a scene where uh they go to the Black Gate and the mouth of Sauron comes out dude he suffered greatly at the hands of his host <laughs> Because you don't see anything else like that in, in any of the three movies. My god, it's gonna eat my face and devour my soul. Like it also reminds me of something from Dark Souls. If anybody has ever played Dark Souls, it looks like a creature from the Dark Souls series. Do I have a favorite film? No, I love all three just as equal, so I'm not gonna choose favorites. Do I have favorite scenes? This is this is a scene that um everyone tends to favor. Um, because it's just so grand and epic. It's the scene where in the Return of the King where King Theoden comes in with his army and he goes to save the, the city of Gondor and like he gives his speech. He rallies down and he's like Death! Death! <laughs> like Cheer to death, yay! Um, but of course, that's just epic as ever because of the speech. Um, there's just so much emotion going on with that scene, and naturally, the, the music, of course, of you know, yeah. Other than that, though, Blow the Rings, cool movie, watch it before you die, put it on your bucket list, it's worth watching. Uh, The Hobbit, that's a different story, it, it doesn't have the charm. In the meantime, though, this is Amy uh, checking out. Bye, Doug. Love you.